Hi, Rich Spizzano here from Digitally Fearless. I have been seeing a lot of comments and postings asking if Affinity Photo can save paths just like Photoshop does. It would be nice if Affinity Photo did this, but as of now, it doesn't save a path in the usual way. But I got to thinking there's a workaround and you can save a path. So I'll show you that right now. So let's get started. So I pulled in this balloon from stock photos. You can have any photo you want. And I am going to take my pen tool. So I'm going to do this very quickly just so you, you, we can show a path here. So let me pull out just a little. I'm just going to start creating these lines right here. In fact, I'm just going to cut it right across the bottom because the point of this tutorial is not about uh, making selections of paths. It's about how to save the path. Okay, so I'm going into my node tool now and I'll just drag these out. Now remember, it's not perfect path. It's just for the tutorial. And I'm going to bring, I think I'm going to do a black outline, just maybe 0.6 so I can see it. So there we have a path. And you know, you can mask it, you can do whatever you want, but sometimes you want to work on something and then come back to it and change these with you know with the node tool, you can fix things later on. And Photoshop, what you normally do is you go into a tab that says path, and then you have to right click, you have to find that work path, you have to right click on that, you have to save uh, that work path, and then you can also then you have to uh, select that again, and then you have to say make a clipping path or whatever. So I am going to try something different. This is a workaround. So now that we have a path, I tried it several ways and I finally found a solution. So I'm going to just show you the first way and what, why it didn't work. And then I'll show you the second way that worked really well. So now that we have this path, I just have to open up the assets panel and I go window. No, I'm sorry, view, studio and assets. And in assets, I created something called path. And what I'll do is I'll delete it. I'll show you how I created it. So what you do up here in the assets panel is you say create new category, and then you could rename it. And I rename it paths and said, okay. So now that we're in paths, what I can do is select, I have that path selected, not that, make sure you select the path and you go here and you, you do add from selection. And it worked. You barely can see it. It's right in there because it's just a, a thin line. But the problem with this one is, and the next time I'll, I'll hide the path that's there now. If I want to use it, what I have to do is find exactly where it fits. And that's not easy. And, you know, you can go to the node tool and adjust it. But I didn't like that because I want the path to be exactly where it was before. So instead, what I did Make sure snapping is turned on and you can see the whole canvas. So here's the whole canvas. And what I did then is I made a new layer and took the uh, selection tool. And because snapping is turned on, it should select that whole corner. And then I fill it. And I filled it with white. And then I deselected by doing Control or Command D. And I moved the clipping path over it. You select the two and you do control or command G and now it's grouped. So now that I have that selected, I can go back to my assets panel and say add from selection. And there it is right there. If I deleted this, I'm going to delete it. And if I, in fact, I can, I can close this and reopen it, but I'll show you that in a second. But first let's show you how it works. So what I can do now, as long as snapping is on, is I can just drag this over and it's it should snap into the corners where it belongs. And if if it snaps correctly, then you know that all you have to do is turn off the white and there's your clipping mask. And you can go back and select that mask, that curve, and then you can adjust it and move it around and do whatever you want. So you can continue your work. You can also go back to the pen tool and up top it says selection. And you can have a selection, and then you can go here and you can mask it. 
So it's not exactly like Photoshop, but it does exactly the same thing. Uh, you're basically saving something. And I'm going to try one more thing just to show you that this works. I'm going to delete the mask. I am going to delete this group, and all we have is this picture. And if I do File, Save, File, Close, and then I, I go to open a new one. So that's, let me move it out of the way here if I can somehow. And then all I need to do is drag this in and make sure snapping is turned on. So you can snap right to the canvas. And then when you open this up, you can, you can even delete the white one if you want. And there it is. And so now if I want to use it, let me close this up. Anytime I want to use it, I can go back to my node tool, and there it is, and I can change it around, or I can decide at that point I don't need it to do that. So now I'll go right to the pen tool, and I can decide at that point to make a selection out of it, and then I can mask it and do a clipping mask. So until Affinity comes up with their own paths tab, uh, maybe you have a better suggestion, but I think this works and it's not really hard to do. Uh, there's like four steps to do it in Photoshop, I think three steps and then four steps in Affinity. So if you found this useful, please click like and subscribe and have a great day. Bye.